If you go article by article through the Constitution, every part of the Constitution has a federal aspect to it. The specific relationships are multiple and complex, and they are treated in detail in the Constitution, but there is a, a broader uh, sort of set of principles embedded in the constitutional text. Those broader principles, I think, have to do with the fundamental idea that both the states and the national government have assigned roles under our Constitution. Often we talk about constitutional structure, but we rarely talk about the meaning of structure. I think that people like James Madison believe strongly that the structure of government influenced conduct. It was a behavioralistic model. You know, in architecture, particularly modern architects, define space and structure as a way of directing behavior, of getting people to operate, to move in certain ways. Constitutional structure is the same way. By cabining certain areas, we influence how they react to each other. The American constitutional system is based on checks and balances and other structural guarantees, but particularly the separation of powers and federalism are the core structural guarantees within our system. Article 1, the division of power between the Congress and the states through the enumeration of powers in Article 1, Section 8. Uh, the implication being that if the power isn't granted to Congress in Article 1, Section 8, and if it's not withheld from the states in Article 1, Section 10, our assumption is Congress doesn't have the power unless it's explicitly granted, and the states do have the power unless it's explicitly withheld. That's not airtight because there are parts of the Constitution that withhold powers from the Congress but that was the basic understanding of the way that enumerated powers uh, works. And the Bill of Rights and the 10th Amendment simply reiterate that as uh, further uh, making more explicit limitations on the power of the uh, national government. James Madison made the argument, and Hamilton did especially in Federalist 84, that a Bill of Rights was not necessary because it, it would be making exceptions to powers that Congress doesn't have in the first place. And they had to give up on that argument because the popular demand, the Anti-Federalist for a Bill of Rights, was so great. Madison especially felt obliged to you know, offer some amendments that would quell some of the concerns about this. The Tenth Amendment is, in some sense, a reiteration of the whole theory of the structure of the Constitution. The Tenth Amendment is a reminder in the Constitution of the very nature of the American Social Compact. And the nature of the American Social Compact is essentially this. The people are sovereign. Why are the people sovereign? Because all men are created equal. And because all men are created equal, no man has the right to rule another man, except with his consent. And therefore, consent of the governed is necessary to the just powers of government. We've become a more centralized system as a result of the amendments. The 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which were adopted in the aftermath of the Civil War, gave more power to the national government to protect rights, right to vote, equality rights, and the ban on slavery. The 16th Amendment is likewise very important. The 16th Amendment is an amendment establishing the federal income tax, or allowing government, Congress, to establish a federal income tax. And that provided resources to the federal government before more funds were raised by the states and localities. Now the main revenue raiser is the federal government and it can use the funds that it's raised, distribute them back to states and localities, but do so 
with, as it were, strings attached, and we will give you money to do particular things that we think are important. If the question is which amendments are most important for creating a certain governmental structure, in particular for giving expression to the concept of federalism, I think the, the first amendment that you would have to mention is the Tenth Amendment, which uh, says that all powers not delegated uh, to the United States are reserved to the states or the people. It's odd that this is such a fundamental expression of federalism because in a way uh, it's, uh, as the Supreme Court has said a number of times, it's a truism or a tautology because to say if the federal government doesn't have it, it doesn't have it and it, the power resides somewhere else seems too obvious to be stated. But in fact, it's an exceedingly important principle because it's a direct affirmation of the principle that the federal government, the national government's legislative powers are limited. <laughs>